Now we will consider the neutral helium instead of helium ion which was hydrogenic line which was hydrogenic and in neutral helium we know that now we are having two protons means the nucleus this one means we will just replace by z equal to 2 but now we are having two electrons and now the when I consider the neutral helium atom then this electron electron repulsion term I will also have to include like there will be how many terms the first we will have the z equal to n1 electron so hydrogenic and then the z equal to 2 and another electron another hydrogenic and then we will have the electron electron repulsion term as well and we will see that what will be the result of our approximation so let's start uh, writing our Hamiltonian so the Hamiltonian will be H equals minus H bar square over 2 M1 and delta this is gradient square gradient 1 square minus 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught and z e square over r and this will be r1 and this is one term means this is the kinetic energy term and this is the potential energy term and then there will be another term with delta uh, sorry with gradient 2 and with del uh, with del 2 and r2 so i will have plus minus h bar square over 2 m2 m2 for the second particle means the second electron so this is m2 and del 2 square minus 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught and z e square over r2 so this is the second term means what i have done i have considered the z equal to 2 n electron with it so it was hydrogenic z equal to 2 n another electron with it and another hydrogenic combination and then the final term is the repulsive term plus 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught and q1 q2 so both are electrons so i will write e square over r now this r how i will write this r this r will be actually the coordinates are the one for one electron i am writing r1 and for the other i am writing r2 now i can write r1 and r2 and r2 and r1 so i will write the absolute value of r1 minus r2 at any point they will have the combination like this so here i will write r1 minus r2 this is the separation between the two particles the two electrons and this term plays a key role here which is a repulsive term in the Hamiltonian now we will have to move towards the wave functions and toward the energy of the system then what will be the ground state energy or the excited state energy and the corresponding wave functions so let's start with this and if i write the wave function then sine r1 
R2. I write this is sin n l m. For one combination, I will write R1, and for the other combination, I will write R2. And now the question is that the question here is what will be the ground state wave function? What will be the ground ground state wave function of neutral helium of helium, so this is neutral helium. If we ignore the repulsive term, if we ignore the repulsive term, means if we ignore the electron, electron repulsion, and what will be the energy, the ground state wave function and the ground state energy. What will be the these two and we will now derive them. I know that the ground state R1, R2 is equal to sine and this will be 1, 0, 0 because we are having the ground state R1 and similarly this will be also the ground state R2 and this is just like we are treating them like one hydrogenic atom and another hydrogenic atom and we are just adding them up. So this thing will be equal to means taking this expression which we calculated for the helium ion or the hydrogenic helium that was H over h square root which we have written 2 square root 2 and pi a naught cube and e to the power minus 2 r 1 over a naught and this will be multiplied with another here and again h over pi a naught cube and e to the power minus 2 are 2 over a naught and now I can do multiply them and this will be equal to 8 over pi a naught cube and e to the power minus 2 r1 plus r2 over a naught so this will be the ground state wave function of the helium atom, neutral helium atom, when we ignore the repulsion between its electrons. And the ground state energy, the ground state energy will be Em, and this will be, is we have written big one minus. This was E1 into Z square, let me write that one, E1 over N square and here was Z square. So now we will have the two systems. So it will be multiplied with 2 as well and this will be when and one n is one, z is two, because we are having the helium atom, and two multiplied with this. So just multiply with the previous value, which was fifty-four point four electron volt. Multiply that value by two here, and we will have this value equal to approximately one o nine electron volt. It will be 108.8 .8 electron volt, which we can approximate is 109 electron volt. And if I go towards the experimental value, 
So the experimental value is much less than this one. This is, uh, you don't forget to write the minus sign. The experimental value is minus, minus 78.975 electron volt, which is much less than this value. So the reason for this is that we are having approximations after approximations here. The very first we did this thing is approximation like instead of single proton we are having two proton and in the calculation which we did for the single proton and single electron we just put z equal to 2 there. This is one approximation and the other approximation we did here is that we remove this term as well. So this is something that account for this much inconsistency here. Okay. Now we need to include spin in our discussion. And as we are having the fermions, so this is spin. And the addition of spin, we remember that when we were having the hydrogen atom, when we were having the hydrogen atom, we got the addition of the spin angular momenta. And the addition of the spin angular momenta gave us two types of combination what was one was singlet and the other was triplet combination and we wrote uh, their details that this singlet the wave function which was associated with this singlet combination was anti symmetric And the one we got for the triplet combination was symmetric. And is in the exchange forces, we discuss in details that the bosons are having symmetric wave functions, while the fermions are having anti-symmetric wave functions. Now, is our wave function is not only the spatial wave function, but this spatial wave function, this spatial wave function is combined means R theta phi N L M. This is combined with the spinner, and the spinner is describing the spin. So this whole wave function or this whole state of a system should be anti-symmetric and for fermions for fermions the state of the system should be anti-symmetric now if we have this one symmetric then its spinner should be anti-symmetric and our wave function will become anti-symmetric and when we are having this one anti-symmetric, then the spin should be symmetric. And as a result, we will have anti-symmetric. So we will have to take care of this thing because now we are extending our discussion towards the helium neutral atom. So in the helium neutral atom, we easily wrote the special wave function. But what will happen to the spin? Because this is not a complete state of a system. This is not a complete wave function. Complete wave function will be when the spatial will combine with the spinner. And then we will decide whether it is symmetric or anti-symmetric. And it should be anti-symmetric because we are dealing with the fermions. So here we will have to look at this combination when we 
form the spatial wave function, the spatial wave function comes out like this. And now if I change R1 with R2, like in this combination, if I change means the sign, a function of R1 and R2, if I exchange sign with R2, R1, if I exchange R1 and R2 with each other and no sign comes in here means plus sign is still here then I will see that my wave function is symmetric and when minus sign comes out of this then I will say that my wave function is anti-symmetric. So let's come here. Let's come here. That when I change R1 and R2, minus sign is not coming out. So it means that the wave function of this one, the wave function of the spatial wave function of the hydrogen, uh, of the helium, neutral helium, Ignoring spin, ignoring the repulsion term is symmetric because no minus sign is coming out. So this is symmetric. When this is symmetric, this wave function is symmetric, then I know that the spinner should be anti-symmetric. Otherwise, it is not possible to have the wave function for the fermions. It cannot be the wave function for the fermions. So, this one is now we came to know that this one is symmetric and this one is anti symmetric. So, we will have to now take this one because we have not yet calculated the spinner, the addition of the angular momenta. But we know that it should be singlet. It should be singlet combination because the singlet is anti-symmetric. It cannot be the triplet because it is symmetric. Symmetric and symmetric cannot make anti-symmetric. So now the spinner should be anti-symmetric and anti-symmetric is the singlet combination. So we say that in a helium when we consider this situation then we will have the singlet combination and, and this causes the <clears throat> and this causes our total helium like atom with this one symmetric with this one symmetric and this one anti-symmetric means the singlet the singlet this helium atom we call is perihelion this we call is perihelion and when we will have, when we will have this one, when we will have this one, like we do calculate with the exact calculations, then this one comes in anti-symmetric, means when we don't ignore the repulsive term and we do exact calculation, this one comes out anti-symmetric and we will have to take the spinner is symmetric means a triplet and when it is with the triplet combination so the triplet combination we call that helium is arcohelium and that means the electron spins in that situation will give rise to the arthrohelium instead of perihelium and this is 
are so uh, experimentally proved that the perihelion, the singlet energy is more than the orthohelion. So we will not go into more details of this uh, because then it comes under the advanced quantum mechanics calculations to calculate exactly for the perihelion and then orthohelion and then derive their energies and their energies are different. Perihelion energy is more than the orthohelion because when we are having more distributions then the energy gets lower. When we are having single distribution then our singlet configuration our energies are more.